Hey everyone, it's Spencer Hawes here and welcome back to the show. Uh, today I want to talk about link building and specifically how you can do due diligence to make sure you're actually getting high quality backlinks. And so that's the topic primarily that Sujan Sarkar and I uh, discuss. Uh, Sujan is the founder of OneLittleWeb.com. Uh, they provide link building services. They are an agency that does both links and also content as well. And so we dive into Sujan's story about how he got started uh, building websites and actually was involved in sort of viral Facebook pages back in the day when those were really popular. And so uh, he did some interesting things there that we discuss. Uh, but then we really jump in the bulk of the interview into link building. And so we talk about uh, what type of links are valuable. Do you want a link from a high domain authority site or do you want one with high traffic? And what are the other criteria that you need to be looking at to actually decide if your link provides value? And so uh, we kind of weave through a lot of different topics, including outreach and how to do outreach and, and some things that have worked really well to get a high response rate uh, from the guys at One Little Web, uh, along with a few other things. But it really is centered on SEO, link building, and uh, Sujan even shares a couple of uh, success stories uh, that you can hear how well uh, some of their clients have been doing. And so I hope you enjoyed the interview. I hope you're able to take away some actionable tips that you can apply into your own business. Uh, but as well, Sujan was kind enough to offer something special to the Niche Pursuits listeners. And you can see exactly what that is if you go to nichepursuits.com slash one little web. Um, again, that's nichepursuits.com slash one little web. And primarily the offer is a free DA40 link if you buy a DA50 link. Okay. And so that's the primary offer, but there are also some other discounts on link building packages or content packages if you want to check that out. So either way, I hope you enjoy the discussion. I hope you get some tips that you can apply for link building and that will help you grow your own website. So here's the interview. Hey, John, Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Hey, sponsor. Thank, thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to have you on the show. Um, we uh, connected recently and uh, exchanged a couple of emails, and uh, you've got a company that is starting to um, be um, seen in a few different places. I've noticed you guys across the web in a few different uh, locations, and clearly you're growing and doing some interesting things there. So I want to talk about One Little Web, of course, uh, but I also want to get your background and so uh, people know who you are and you can introduce yourself to the Niche Pursuits listeners. So for those that are unfamiliar with you and One Little Web, uh, why don't you just give us a brief uh, professional background? Sure. Thank you very much for, uh, again, having me here. And it's really glad that you have already uh, seen us uh, around the web. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's a, you know, um, a, a long um, expectations for us to be here with you and, and uh, give it a chance and, and then talk about us. So, well, um, uh, I'm actually um, um, an affiliate marketer, blogger, SEO expert, and entrepreneur. Uh, and, um, you know, um, basically, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'd like to call myself as an entrepreneur mostly, you know? Yeah. Um, well, that sounds good. Yeah, we love having entrepreneurs on the uh, on the podcast. Can you give us um, any sort of idea of some online entrepreneurship that you've done in the past? Like, how, how did you make your first dollar online? Uh, well, you know, it's a long story, basically, you know. Um, I basically started back in 2010 um, and as, as a Facebook marketer. And, uh, you know, I, was, I started actually making money by monetizing Facebook page visitors by sending them to my website. So I had this, um, you know, amazing technique to grow my Facebook fan page for free, and I grew around, you know, 10, um, 10 million, uh, I mean, five million plus Facebook followers on my page. Um, I think, you know, back in twenty ten, and then I started monetizing those websites um, with AdSense and some other ad platforms, and then, you know, uh, followed by, you know, I realized basically there were some other uh, viral. 
uh, content monetization platforms. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Board Panda, Brightside, mm-hmm. My Life. Okay, so these are, I mean, remember the time when viral content were actually booming and, and, and were all over the Facebook uh, pages. So basically that was a time, you know, I actually got involved into this. And, you know, I started monetizing uh, my Facebook followers with, uh, you know, those viral content monetization platform. And, um, you know, after a while, when I, when I was working with them, I realized, okay, uh, these platforms were paying really less to their publishers, you know? So, you know, I decided, okay, why not maybe I try to launch a, a platform like them and, you know, where I could be, you know, sharing a fair share to the publishers, right? So so that's what I did. I actually uh, reached out to a couple of my fellow cool, um, co-founders and basically we co-founded um, that platform. And you know and so what? just to uh, just to clarify, so you're basically talking about founding like an ad platform essentially for viral content. Is that right? Yeah, that was a kind of a monetization platform, uh, and you know where essentially the Facebook fan page uh, owners or publishers would be you know signing up for that one, and then you know they could uh, you know we will be creating the viral contents, and then they will be publishing those contents to their networks, and then driving traffic to our website at the end of the day, and then we'll be monetizing them and sharing a share with them, right? Mm-hmm. After, yeah. after we monetize them with our networks and our ad channels, right? So that we did actually, and it, within just three months time, we went profitable, right? And then, you know what, just um, Facebook policy changed all of a sudden that, you know, um, Facebook publishers or fan page owners can no longer uh, promote third party contents um, if they're not the real owner of the content. Mm. So basically afterwards we had to actually change the direction of the business. But you know, that actually was a kind of, you know, one of my entrepreneurial uh, you know endeavor that actually worked out, but for some reason uh, I couldn't proceed further with this. So, you know, I decided actually to start with an affiliate website. And uh, that's how I actually got started with uh, affiliate website and followed by SEO. So I'll be talking about how the the uh, in a wonderful web got started and stuff. Maybe uh, so. Yeah, this is how basically we uh, it got started with SEO and affiliate marketing. Okay, and um, so just to kind of catch people up, what uh, businesses are you involved with right now? So obviously you've got one little web. Do you still have a, a mm-hmm. portfolio of affiliate sites or anything else that you're working on right now? Uh, well, basically, uh, apart from one little web, I'm actually working with a couple of other um, you know, companies um, that I co-founded with. Um, like we have this um, you know, SaaS business development form um, where we are actually working on developing some of the SEO SaaS businesses. Um, I, I guess you know, in the just next couple of months, we'll be able to you know, um, launch that product. So, or maybe you know, uh, I'll, I'll definitely get in touch with you maybe to, to discuss further about this. Um, I'm quite excited okay. about this product that we have, and we have more, you know, SaaS businesses in place. Um, and we are also, uh, I'm also working with a media and publishing company. Um, it's, it's, uh, we have actually um, around five to uh, six websites that we're working with right now and publishing, and, and these are doing really great. So um, yeah, um, I'm kind of associated with all three businesses right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and so the media publishing business, uh, that's something that you have some partners on, you say, that has uh, mm-hmm. five or six websites um, yeah. and, and they're doing well. What, what kind of sites are those? Oh, they're mostly related to, um, affi- I mean, they're affiliate websites. So related to like, you know, grooming niche, we have, um, um, you know, uh, fashion uh, niche that we have this um, cooking and, you know, um, and, and then beauty niche. We have some other industries as well. Uh-huh. So, you know, um, different platforms and different niches. Yeah. So um, just to dig into the portfolio just a little bit, um, how sure. you say they're doing well. Can you share like uh, how well the best one is doing, either in terms of traffic or earnings or anything else that you're willing to share? Yeah, sure. Um, well, um, we have this one website, um, you know, we started just, um, uh, I think, um, um, about six months before. And um, this one is um, getting um, around 100K traffic per month. Wow. Yeah. 
and um, we have some some other um, uh, and some other websites as well. I mean, these are just a little smaller ones. You know, uh, the, the the most of our focus are right now uh, basically to build this one little web uh, sure. because uh, you know this has been um, a big uh, dream of ours for a while, and it yeah. is clearly you know, in a showing a good promise. So we're actually mostly focusing on this. And aside, we have a couple of managers managing the you know, other, um, you know, aspects of the business. Yeah. So we, yeah. Yeah. We'll dive into one little web here in just a second, but um, I know people that are listening are mostly building affiliate sites and um, building mm -hmm. content sites. And so they're, they're really interested in hearing, you know, about how you're doing with those sites. So um, you've got a site that uh, is, you know, close to a hundred thousand dollars a month or a hundred thousand visitors, uh, visitors a month right. uh, after six months. How'd you do that? Where's the traffic coming from? You know what? Um, we have this um, um, because you know we've been working with this SEO and affiliate, um, you know, content marketing business for a while, and we know how. Uh, I mean, we have got some amazing ideas. You know, uh, you know, probably by uh, when we'll be discussing further our strategies at one little web. Basically, these are the strategies that we apply for our niche websites as well. And amazingly, all these strategies works well. Like, you know, we, we focus on, um, you know, super um, authoritative content uh, and well-researched content. And obviously, as we have this, you know, amazing team who is capable of securing, you know, um, very top-notch quality backlinks. Um, and these are super, uh, I mean, these are super quality backlinks with tons of traffic. So ultimately, they actually get us this result. So we have this, in a content strategy in place and the, the you know tailor fit backlinking approach that we have, we have in place actually gets us this result and obviously prior to this the keyword research is uh, one of the key factors that we always focus on so you know when we do the keyword research we make sure uh, you know they are uh, super easy to rank and obviously we a decent a decent search volume um, you know so just to let you know you know uh, long tail pro i mean of yours has has been one of our favorite tools for a while, and you know we we use this. Um, you know we still use it. Uh, you know for keyword research and our analysis. So yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's good to know that uh, Longtail Pro is still serving people well. It's been around for uh, uh, boy uh, about ten years, just over ten years now is when I created Longtail Pro. So thank you. Um, so yeah. just to clarify, it sounds like all the traffic. Uh, the hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand visitors per okay. month uh, traffic yeah. is coming from SEO. Yeah, after All six months. Probably. So that's that's yeah. really interesting. I, um, I, I just I don't know that I've ever seen that on a new site. Usually, it takes um, at least a year or two uh, to get to traffic levels that size. Yeah, and, and you know what? Uh, probably we're planning to maybe uh, write a case study on this. Um, we actually have we're, we're actually you know writing some case studies on um, on our different strategies and how we pulled up pulled up different uh, you know websites and the traffic. So a couple of um, you know case studies have been published on our blogs. So probably this is going to be another case study that, that we are planning to publish pretty soon. So yeah, probably we'll be you know more than happy to share with you the strategy and how we did this for for this website. All right, um, that sounds good. Let's let's jump into one little web. So. Why did you start One Little Web? And what is it for listeners that maybe don't know? Okay, um, here's the thing. As I said, you know, um, uh, when I, I mean, things didn't work out with the other business that I had. So I started with this, you know, affiliate website. So, you know, after I started with this affiliate website, you know, we needed a backlink, right? So, you know, we, we actually thought of, um, first of all, uh, getting backlink services from maybe you know some agencies, and you know what we actually tried out some some of the big names, and uh, you know unfortunately we we faced some of the some some you know some something that I didn't like right so I was I was kind of frustrated and disappointed with the with, with the with the services so you know I, I actually pointed out a few of the things basically I that I I figure out was not up to my expectations so you know. Let, do you, uh, let, let me just, you know, point out some of the factors that I, I actually addressed and, uh, you know, that I didn't like um, right. with those service providers. You know, first of all, um, you know, I, I saw them, um, I mean, most of these services or links being PBNs and link forms. 
So what I mean by this is if you know, I mean, I'm sure you know this, you know, um, most of the peoples are creating um, you know, websites with expired domains for the PBN purposes. And then later on, they just, you know, keep on dumping um, and random contents to their websites. And then, you know, they just take an editorial fee and, and publish any random contents. So, you know, most of the sellers or most of the agencies basically, um, they, uh, I mean, as we tried out, we see most of them are, you know, PBNs uh, mostly. And, you know, what I didn't like about it is, you know, they didn't let me prove or see the domain where I'm going to get the link from. Like, you know, I, I place an order and I submit the, the, the anchor text or target URL and they just, they just get me the uh, published, uh, you know, backlink. Now, you know, it, I, I don't like this idea because, you know, it, it, it gives me the, it doesn't give me the ability to see what's the, you know, metrics of the domain, whether it's, I, I cannot do the due diligence on this. So I didn't like this idea. And, uh, you know, um, backlinks from websites with um, no traffic or maybe little traffic. So basically, again, I didn't like this because the website, websites with little or no traffic actually um, doesn't really count if it doesn't have, um, I, I, I mean, it, having enough DA or I don't know, um, domain rating is not enough if it doesn't have traffic, right? So, and then most of them were super expensive and, um, you know, the, the contents were uh, where the, we, we used to, I mean, I got backlinks. So basically there were substandard content. So I didn't like them, right? So I decided basically to um, start doing our own, I mean, to, to do the backlinks of our own. So I actually you know, went ahead and did the research and you know, went through different SEO blogs and tutorials to learn the whole process of backlinking, right? And how to master this you know, backlinking things and how to actually find niche specific and high quality backlinks that really matters, right? So I actually had a couple of my you know, um, team members basically um, helping me out with this process. Like, you know, probably I, I started with this prospecting and then, you know, reaching out communications. And then, you know, I had these two members helping me out with the content writing things. And then I, I did the rest of the things like, you know, always reaching out to the webmaster and finding a new strategy. And I was just looking for quality backlink on how I can actually, actually secure them. So, you know, by just next five or six months, I actually secured a quite a good number of backlinks for a website. So, you know, when I, uh, I realized, okay, this is a nice strategy and, you know, um, I actually could have, uh, acquire or secure a good number of backlinks for our website. And these were super quality traffic uh, websites. And you know what, um, the way I used to reach out to the webmasters, you know, did they, they um, the, some of the webmasters really reached back to us, right? They, they asked uh, if we can support them with their backlinking things. I mean, you know, the way we communicated with them um, for backlink acquisition, so they liked the way and they, uh, actually offered me to, you know, support them with their backing positions, right? So, so uh, they, <laughs> to dive in, jump in there. So can you give us an idea of the type of outreach emails that you were sending that were so effective? Like what was sort of the general thing that you were asking that seemed to resonate so well with webmasters? Well, well see, first of all, um, if, if, if I mean, any webmasters loves to have a content um which is valuable, right? And uh, which are, um, you know, research driven. And what I usually do is, you know, I just go to the, the target website and, and take a look at, at the content gap analysis. I mean, I do the content gap analysis on Ahrefs and see maybe, you know, some promising content that they are missing out and that their competitors are, are probably covering that topic, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't actually believe in a good, uh, uh, huge number of email blasting instead you know i wanted to you know reach out one by one and see the content gap and figure out what content could have you know got them interested in this right and obviously i i draw the attention that see your competitors are covering this so how about i i covered this aspect of of the content and probably and and obviously you know by the time i uh, initially it was hard I, I secured maybe five or six backlinks so you know, I had this portfolio, right? 
I could I could easily show what is the quality of the backlink that I'm proposing and talking about. And I am no like any other, you know, random outreach outreach guys who are just trying to secure or maybe just uh, you know dump any random contents. So you know, I had this portfolio in place, and then I just you know had this content gap analysis for them, and then I just pitched them. Okay, this is what I have in mind. And this is the topic that I'm, I'm covering, and your competitor is, uh, is doing, and probably you're missing out on this. So how about I write this content for you and take a look at some of the samples, right? And then they, you know, mostly, most of the times they actually agree to this one. Okay, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And so is yeah. that uh, still the similar process to what you're following um, in, in terms of one little web, you're still doing a lot of outreach and, and sort of um, uh, either proposing content or just keeping them within your network uh, for future links. Is that kind of the way it works? Uh, well, you know what, um, obviously, um, when I'm reaching out to the webmasters and um, I'm having a good communications with them. So maybe yes, um, the ones I feel like is a quality one, I, I, I do actually save the context so that maybe for future reference or if I need it for the future purpose, probably I can, you know, uh, maybe reach out to them again, and then, um, you know, publish another great piece, right? So yes, I did save them, but you know, most of the time, because now the business is diverse. Now we have a lot of uh, niches that we have to work with. We have different clients from different niches. So uh, you know, we 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 need to do we need to actually you know do the prospecting most of the time uh, from the scratch for every okay. single client that we have, um, and we have to reach out to them because we have a different requirements from clients. You know, so we have to actually tailor fit the the entire process for every single client that we have. Now, fortunately, if we have if we get a couple of them, maybe a couple of prospects that we probably worked with before, that gets easier. Probably the turnaround time gets easier because they already know our quality, right? We just reach out to them again and just tell them, okay, uh, look, we have this this time this content in mind. What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And then they, you know. Um, most of the time they say yes to this and then uh, we proceed further from there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, what type of results are your clients getting? I mean, now that you you obviously kind of went through the story, you built one little web, we understand a little bit how you got started and how you mm -hmm. um, started you know, making contact with uh, lots of webmasters. Um, what sort of results are clients seeing from link building? Do you have any success stories that you can either share from clients or anything like that? Yeah, um, you know what? Um, um, basically, if you, if you go to our you know blog section on One Little Web, um, you could uh, you could pull those um, you know case studies that were recently published. So I'd like to give you a couple of um, you know case studies that were recently published, and you know give give a, a quick summary what we've done for them and what's the result like, right? Okay, sure, so, that'd be great. Yeah. So uh, here's this um, client from Woodworking Tools. Um, basically, this is a, a kind of, um, I mean, you know this industry, right? Woodworking tools. Woodworking tools, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this this guy basically got started with us back in uh, December 2019. And, um, you know, um, we've been still working with, with, with him. And, um, you know, it's been 12 months um, or 12 months, I mean, more than 12 months, actually. And uh, we've got him um, 250 outreach-based guest post backlink for him. And these are all niche specific. And, um, you know, we, we, we've got a, a quite a, I mean, we've already broken it down into, into our case study, uh, you know, the process and, you know, what's the, uh, you know, average DA uh, backlink we've uh, secured for them and what's the traffic like on those backlinks. So, you know, just to give you a quick summary, basically in 12 months, we got him 250 backlinks. And when he started off with us, so it was, 55,000 hrefs of organic traffic. So, you know, um, you know, I think if you estimated, um, if you estimate the real traffic, it would be around 180K real traffic. So when they started with, with us, right? And um, right after 12 months with uh, additional 250 backlinks with one little web, um, it's now 145K hrefs organic traffic. Wow. So, which is estimated to be, you know, al al almost half a million traffic um, per month on their website. Right. right. Yeah. And, and again, you know, um, if, if you go to our website, wonderfulweb.com slash blog, 
you should be able to see the, the case studies and you know, the, the breakdown, how it pulled this off for this client. Now another uh, amazing case study for another client of ours. Um, you know, this client is from uh, UK and uh, he's in online retail business. Um, he started with us back in February, 2020. And, you know, it was, uh, uh, he was, um, I mean, he's, he is a very established business, but you know, his website was not making a lot of traffic. Um, when he started off, it was around 500 Ahrefs traffic, right? Um, and, and right now, uh, right after 10 months, um, you know, it, it's 28,000 Ahrefs traffic. Wow, that's um, impressive. Which, yeah, which is estimated to be 90K plus organic traffic in real, mm -hmm. right? And number of backlinks that we secured for him is um, 56. So on average, you know, five to six backlinks per month. Um, so, and it's still continuing. Uh, so these are a couple of, you know, uh, case studies that we all we published recently. And, you know, um, I can give you a clear demonstrations of things, right? But, you know, we are actually finding out some more case studies to publish very soon and with more case studies to share, right? Yeah. And, you know, these are, these are some long-term clients, but we have also, you know, agencies, right? Um, so basically they are, you know, um, going for, you um, 20 to 25, 30, or maybe 50, 50 backlinks per month. And they're just reselling to different individual clients. So that way right. we don't have real track of things, right? Maybe they're selling them or reselling them to their clients. So they have a track of their clients. We don't have uh, many, right? Right, right. So you don't have all the data of everyone getting links because of yeah. the agency model. Right. Yeah, right. Um, that makes sense. Awesome. Those are a couple of really great case studies, uh, impressive growth. So people can check those out uh, on your blog if they want to get more details uh, there. So um, what's what's kind of one special thing, I guess, about one little web, you know, um, and I, I guess what I'm getting at is you you allow uh, the end client kind of the ability to decide if they uh, want the link. Right. So can you explain that process a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, well, um, okay. Let me let me let me give you a um, little bit more idea what's special about our service. Well, first of all, as as I've already mentioned, um, you know, our client actually get you know this is this is the problem that I addressed initially. Right? So you know, the client gets the ability to actually um, you know, improve the domain, and then we we actually. Um, you know, make sure we also do some due diligence. Um, like, you know, we don't prefer orphan pages to get a link from, right? So now right. this is the big concern, you know, the, the webmasters are getting smarter. So basically what they do is, you know, they have this uh, special category or, you know, some, some uncategory that they just, you know, dump in the, uh, the guest post publications. And this is a, really an orphan page, right? And um, you know, it clearly is an indication that you're not getting um, a good SEO value out of the link, right? So, you know, what we make sure is, um, you know, uh, whatever the website that we're reaching out to, they're not publishing this on an um, orphan page. And um, you know, um, I, I think uh, this is also a significant point of ours um, that uh, we don't go by DA or DR mostly. We we actually prefer websites with traffic. Right, I, th I think you know websites with more traffic are more trustworthy to Google. Do you agree with me about this? Uh, if we're comparing a, a, a website with traffic versus one without traffic, then yes, I'll take the one with traffic. Absolutely. So yeah, you know what? Most of our clients actually go with websites with more traffic instead of DA because you know what? I've, I've seen websites with, um, I mean, let's say 50 or 60 DA or DR because of the expired domains or something, right? right? But they don't have traffic. So, you know, if you go by the DA or DR, um, you know, sometimes you could be misled or you could end up finding, um, you know, PBN or link firm because it doesn't have much traffic, right? Right. So, you know, we, we prefer going with traffic and, you know, every single package or plan that we have in place, let's say uh, we have these two different packages, one with DA-based plans, another is traffic-based plan that we call authority backlink. Right. So with every single of them, we ensure a certain uh, guaranteed traffic. Um, and, you know, um, so basically the meaning you are not actually getting website, any random uh, websites with no traffic. Right. 
So, right. and then we have websites, we worked with websites from minimum 1K HREFs traffic to, you know, 100K or millions of HREFs traffic in real. So, um, you know, this actually moves the needle. And we were super niche specific uh, backlink provider, meaning, you know, there will be, um, what's easy, there are websites, um, you know, they have um, literally hundreds of categories that accept, they accept guest posts or maybe, you know, guest articles, right? So that's, that's no good for maybe, you know, quality um, websites because they are not actually providing value. They're just dumping uh, different uh, or whatever the contents is being pitched to them. They're just publishing them for a fee, right? So we, 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 we prefer to go with the niche specific websites to get a link from, mm -hmm. right? And um, uh, I think, you know, one more thing that we mostly prefer um, it, you know, the content that we craft for the, for the client, um, you know, these, this is, um, um, you know, tailored to the very spe niche specific, let's say, you know, um, our client is, um, looking for, maybe trying to rank for best electric, um, toothbrush. And, um, you know, we, we will definitely, we will uh, do the brainstorming or content curation will be something like, you know, seven or 10 best things to consider when buying an electric toothbrush, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe, I, I don't know, maybe if we find something uh, with our, again, content gap analysis or a competitor uh, with the comparison to the competitors, if we find something which is more interesting, probably we would find that topic, right? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, the back, and the contents that we write, right? We, we, we always prefer long form of content, especially, I mean, we don't, we don't feel like just five, publishing 500 words or 300 words content uh, you know, covers enough value, um, you know, to be able to cover the specific niche. You know, we, it has to be have, a, it has to have at least, you know, 1000 or maybe 1500 words length. In some cases it goes higher to cover a specific topic thoroughly and, and whatever the links it drives back, you know, it, it, it's, it's a pure value, right? So uh, the, the way that it works as far as the process, so somebody comes in, they order, you know, let's say they want to order some links. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, there's a, a process that goes on behind the scenes with one little web. And mm -hmm. then the client is presented with, here's a list of um, three or five domains that um, are willing to link to you. And the, the client gets the ability mm -hmm. to say, yes, I would like these two, but not this third one. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah. Um, you see, um, there are two different clients that we have. Um, in fact, um, let's say I'll, I'll categorize them in two types. One is, you know, they don't know what SEO is and, you know, they don't have much of a knowledge about SEO, right? And there is another type of client who are expert in this. So they know how to do this. So, you know, uh, with those, um, you know, this ability to, to do the due diligence is, is, is more of, um, you know, uh, beneficial, beneficial for the SEO experts who understand what SEO is. Right. And you know, yeah, so what we do is, um, you know, and, and, you know, to be honest, probably around 80% or 90% of our clients are, you know, SU experts themselves or they understand it, right? So, you know, and, and probably because we have this ability to, you know, prove the domain uh, prior to, I mean, before the placement, it's probably most of the people who would like to know what the domains are like and what, probably they didn't get this sort of, you know, um, opportunity with some other providers. So maybe that's the reason we attract them, right? So, right. Um, so basically, yes. When uh, whenever they place an order, so our account manager basically um, create um, uh, new informations to find prospects for the client, and the outreach team actually goes ahead and find those, um, you know, uh, prospects tailored to the client's need, right? And then they just, um, you know, and then once the outreach manager do the due diligence, I mean, we have a checklist of you know, criteria and they're well-trained how to, how to make sure they find the right domain. So they find it and then they just present it to the uh, account manager. The account manager, again, goes ahead and checks it thoroughly because he's the contact person with the client. He understands, you know, what's the uh, requirements by the client. So he makes sure all the criteria are checked and then sends back to the client. Again, you know, most of the time client says yes because, you know, because of the two-step due diligence process we have in place, but yes, you know, we have some you know, advanced level clients who would like to go ahead and, and you know, maybe do and check, I mean, check more into them. And probably 
um, if they if they need any sort of uh, you know revisions or they want to replace certain domains, we replace them and we find them a better choice. And uh, you know we don't move it further until the client says yes to a right. certain domain for the right. export clients. And yeah. for the ones who doesn't have much of an idea, um, anyway, we have our expert team in place, our account manager, our outreach team. They understand um, and they always comply with 100% SEO practices. So you know they are always in the right company. You know. So um, talking about sort of due diligence, um, you know, if somebody were to go to a different uh, SEO agency or link building agency, right, you kind of talked mm -hmm. about some of the things that, you know, have happened in the past, either PBN links, um, right, or sort of the um, lower quality guest post links, right, can, can happen. So what sort of criteria should um, Niche Pursuits listeners that might be interested in considering getting links um, either from One Little Web or any agency, what, what kind of cr criteria should they be looking at to make sure they really are getting a quality link? Well, I'll, I'll go back to certain, some points. Again, I'll be repeating them. First of all, I always you know, go for the traffic, right? So I'll, um, I'll ask your audience to maybe make sure whatever they're getting the links from, whether they're maybe reaching out to the webmaster themselves or they're just you know, getting it from an agency. They should make sure um, the website is um, with um, a decent traffic or and, and it, should be, um, it should be steady traffic for a while, right? Um, the traffic, there shouldn't have a traffic uh, drop or a significant drop in the past, at least for the last few months or years, right? Mm -hmm. So Ahrefs gives you this ability to you know, check their traffic history for the last few months and years. So, you know, they should make sure the steady traffic growth and they should have a significant traffic, first of all. And, you know, so basically um, it all comes with, I mean, obviously ability to check the domain before the placement, right? So right. either way, they go with one little web or they go with any other service provider. So they should always ask for the domains uh, before they uh, before they proceed with this. So that way they can make sure that they can do the due diligence. They can check um, if there has been any penalties in the past, if the traffic is good, if the DA and other metrics are good, if there has been any recent, you know, um, you see, if you see the last contents published on the specific website, um, let's say you just go through five or 10 of the posts. And if you just scroll, uh, I mean, just go through those posts, you'll definitely be able to identify if, if those are just a random guest post or the, 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 the webmaster is providing the value on it, right? right? So if you see the last uh, you know, five or six or 10 contents, where just, you know, have been published for the sake of guest posts or just no value and just one links going back to, you know, in a commercial page, so that's a clear indication that's not that's not a website you should go for, right? Right. And then, you know, um, we we should always make sure, um, you know, these are no orphan pages. I mean, I've already mentioned about this one, and this is being. Um, I think um, you know we've seen um, the SEOs or SEO experts working with us being more concerned about this. You know, not having a link from link uh, orphan pages. And um, you know what? Um, there has been some uh, amazing um, or you know interesting stories. Basically, you know when we were working with some of the really amazing websites. Um, you know, let's say um, I worked. Uh, I had to actually step in uh, to a certain problem with a publisher. Basically, they have um uh, you know around thirty to thirty five age of traffic, thirty five k age of traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the website is uh, with sixty five domain authority. So that's a big web. I mean, it's it's a, a very good website, right? And um, you know, one of our um, clients agreed to have a you know guest post published on their website, and we got it published. And afterwards, we realized that it didn't have any sort of category. I mean, it was just uncategorized. And um, you know, um, and 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 we we didn't uh, we we actually requested the webmaster to have it categorized properly. And then you know, when, even if it was categorized under the category, we went to that category. And it, it, we realized that it was not even into this category. So I don't know what happened. Right. And, you know, we had to step in again and we have to fix it. Um, and then we actually send it to the client. So, you know, they, they have different different strategies of keeping this content as an orphan. They don't just, you know, they don't have any sort of link from the homepage or they don't have any 
for connection whatsoever from the uh, from the website to those type of content. So you know we don't want this. You definitely should have a proper silo, or your your content should have a proper category, um, so that you you get the proper value, right? Right. And um, you know that should be new specific. Now you should be very. Um, you know I have I've also also had this experience with um you know multi uh, websites with a good traffic. Let's say you know ten k traffic. Or you know, let's say I, I've seen websites with 100k traffic, and you know what they what, what they did basically, um, you know, they just uh, got one um, you know keyword uh, related to I think um, um, you know movie download or something, uh, and which right. is um, I don't know where did they, where they got this from, and they just had this one single keyword, um, you know, um, I think blasted with uh, some sort of blackhead or blackhead backlinking and had this QRL ranking. And uh, you know it was driving them ninety percent or ninety nine percent of the traffic, um, you know, and then the rest of the traffic, I mean, contents of that website are no good. Right. Now, you know, if you take a look um, at the traffic and you don't dig further, you just will say, "Wow, they have one hundred k traffic," but the traffic is irrelevant. Right? Maybe they have um, you know ten different categories, but they just get a link to movie download, and they don't have traffic to any of their other categories or contents whatsoever they have. So that's not a good sign, right? You, you need to have, um, you know, equal traffic flow of your, in, to your contents if it's new specific, right? If, if it's not, probably if you have a, a thousands of topic on a website, I'm afraid it's not a good one, right? Yeah, yeah, so, I agree. No, those are some great um, uh, due diligence steps that uh, people can be looking at to make sure that uh, either they're getting links from a valuable domain or can kind of analyze the domains that maybe you're sending over uh, that they can decide if they want to link from or not. Um, now, when you're doing outreach, you know, a lot of it's guest posts or content gaps uh, that you're able to, you know, secure these links from. Um, do you ever have to, um, I, I know that a lot of um, bloggers now ask for link placement fees, right? Like, hey, mm -hmm. it's going to be 25 bucks or 50 bucks. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys do any niche edits? Is that part of the process? Uh, well, yeah, we, we actually, you know, sometimes, you know, we do a couple of things. Let's say, you know, niche edit is one thing and probably paying the webmaster for the, you know, for the effort, right? Uh, so basically, you know, there are some cases when the website is good, the traffic and metrics are good, and, uh, you know, they are probably spending uh, an hour or maybe more than that to, to publish the, the, the content that we, we sent them, right? So they're spending some hours to publish the content. So that's, uh, you know, we honor the, the hour been spent to edit the content and publish it. So probably in some cases, we need to give them um, an editorial fee for the effort to publish the content. And um, it's not most of the cases, you know, most of the time, um, you know, because of the quality that was provided or the content gap analysis that we do, you know, most of the time they say yes to the content. And the, because of the, uh, you know, the, the quality of the content, basically they say yes to this. But you know, sometimes we have to actually entertain them with an editorial fee for the for the effort they did to make to publish the content. Okay, so you view it as an editorial fee as opposed to paying for the link fee. Yeah. Okay, uh, I will let listeners um, decide so that they're aware of that. Um, you know, the other uh, thing that I actually am just kind of curious on is just one little web itself. I mean, it it has grown a lot. You guys have started to get more visibility uh, in the mm -hmm. last several months. Um, like I said, I have actually seen either ads or just mentions in other places. Um, so I'm kind of curious how you've grown one little web. What's, what's kind of been some of your strategies that have worked really well to actually grow the business itself? Um, well, you know, it, as I said, it all started with, um, you know, when we reached out to webmasters uh, for, um, you know, um, back, guest post publications on the website, and then they actually asked us to, you know, get them um, or service with their, you know, backlinking efforts. So, you know, this is how we all got started with this. And now, you know, we have actually figured out some of the things that the, the other providers are missing out. So we realized, okay, we need to have these things in place. Now, you know, we, uh, we, we just have this now ability to approve the domains and we have this really unmatched pricing, uh, you know, compared to the value that we provide. 
and um, you know trustworthy backlinks um, from authoritative websites or websites with more traffic. And um, you know most of the times we also do the, we also provide complimentary SEO audits to our um, you know clients because probably some of them doesn't understand you know. Uh, you know how to go about this, right? So you know, you, before they start spending money on link building, they need to understand what they're doing and how what should be the right approach about it, right? So we do the do. I mean, we do the SE audit for them as a complementary effort, and then we figure out the strategy and guide them through this. Now, you know, and and then this is what and, and uh, you know this is what actually you know makes our clients happy, and they they mostly talk about us. You know, I'll be I'll be very honest about this, and I mean probably. Uh, for the last um, you know few months, we have uh, got most of our clients from referral. Like you know, someone actually got to our, our business and they, they like the way we operate, the quality that we, that we provide, and they go ahead and they they actually talk about our service in their community. Right, everyone has their communities, so they they talk about us and they they actually you know there are clients staying up with us for months. I mean, for years. Um, you know, some of them are, uh, I mean, um, working with us from the beginning to, to date. So, right. you know, mostly they are, I mean, our, our loyal clients, our happy clients are, you know, talking about us uh, in their communities. And that's actually helping us grow the business, um, you know, better. Yeah. Yep. No, that makes sense. So, so congrats on the growth. Um, it's always Thank awesome to see um, businesses growing. I love that, of course. Um, and so sure. before we go, um, I know we have talked a little bit about um, sort of a special offer that you might be able to give Niche Pursuits mm -hmm. listeners. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give us an idea, you know, what sort of um, special deal are you willing to offer um, Niche Pursuits listeners for One Little Web? Um, well, we have this, um, you know, we, we have these three different services that we're offering right now. Um, one is DA based backlinking service. Another is 30 backlink or you know, in other words, traffic-based guest post backlink, and, uh, and then the third thing's in a content writing service. So we are willing to offer, you know, with with DA based plan, we would like to, um, you know, offer a complimentary DA forty backlink um, with a um, DA fifty order, right? And mm -hmm. um, uh, with with our authority backlinking service, um, we'd like to give uh, your audience a straight fifteen percent. Uh, discount, so you know they, they can go for any any of the numbers. So they get a straight fifteen percent discount. On this and um, we have this ten percent um, you know uh, discount of content writing service. So yeah, any of the services your audience would like to opt for, they can definitely give it a try. And if they if they like, probably they can go further with the service, right? Yep. All right. Very good. Yeah. No, thank you for being willing to offer that, you know, so there's link building services there. Um, listeners can get a free DA 40 link with the purchase of a DA 50 link, or there's um, other link building packages there or uh, content services as well. So um, I know you've set up a special landing page. Um, I'm going to have a URL that goes to nichepursuits.com slash one little web. So if people go to nichepursuits.com slash one little web, that'll direct over to the special landing page uh, that is set up. So listeners can check that out. Um, but overall, uh, I just wanna thank you, Sujan, for coming on the Niche Pursuits podcast. It's been great hearing your story, kind of hearing about some of the success that you've had and uh, what your services are all about. Um, it, do you have any final tips or just anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrap up here? Oh, no, thank you very much. Uh, it was it was great to be on your, on your podcast and your show, and uh, you know uh, it was um, a great discussions. And I think I'm good. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we've given all the details uh, to to listeners. Hopefully, they enjoyed hearing that, and uh, really can just get some own ideas. Whether or not they go with one little web, they can start to do perhaps better due diligence on the types Absolutely. of links that they're building or even some outreach ideas that we discussed. So yeah, I think it was a great discussion that uh, listeners can take and, and hopefully implement into their own business. So thank you once again for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Spencer. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you.